The Apostle Paul believed he stood on the edge of the end times. He was persuaded that Jesus set in motion God's prophetic clock, and in his mind, that clock was moving fast. Typically, Paul's short-term view of time is underemphasized or ignored, but Paul's Jewish apocalyptic end times mindset is a huge factor in understanding his letters. Today on the Game Changers Forum, we're going to discuss three keys to understanding Paul's watch, which will help us better understand his letters in our time. Well, I cannot stand being late. Uh, Starting with my own family, I am well known for being early. And in particular, my kids absolutely love to tease me about how early I arrive at the airport before a flight. And I travel a lot, so this is a big thing. So I like to get to the airport way ahead of time. I like to get there. I like to get a cup of coffee, ease my way to the gate, which living in Atlanta and with Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is my home airport. This does not always go according to plan, but I like to try anyway. And for me, the big reason I don't like to be late comes down to the fact that I don't like to feel rushed. When I feel like time is rushed and moving quickly, I don't handle it that well. Now, some people really enjoy cramming and rushing and cutting it close, but that's definitely not me. Now, look, whether we like a fast moving clock or not, when time is short, every one of us acts differently than we do when we think we have plenty of time. I mean, of course, there's there's an urgency, there's an intensity, there's a sharpness to our thinking and often to our tone. And, you know, when we think that time is short and moving really fast, we're usually not thinking beyond the time left on the clock. Well, the Apostle Paul was persuaded that God's end times clock was moving lightning fast. According to his letters, the revelation he experienced regarding Jesus led him to believe that a new age had broken in and that the world would finally change for good as soon as Jesus returned. And in Paul's thinking, that could happen in weeks or months or at the most a few years. Now, typically, Paul's letters are read as timeless theology, as if he intended to write for modern audiences just as much as his own. Now, for Christians, Paul's letters are ageless and inspired. But regardless of how one classifies Paul's letters, it's a short path to getting entangled if we don't factor in Paul's short-term view of time when interpreting his letters. So to help stay free of such knots, I'm going to share three keys to remember about how Paul operated in relation to time. I think these keys can help us in our time to better understand his letters. Okay, key number one to understanding Paul's watch is this. Paul thought Jesus was coming back in his lifetime. Now, this is so important to keep in mind because it affects everything that Paul wrote. And speaking of what Paul wrote, I think Paul would be shocked to learn that his letters continue to be immeasurably valued 2,000 years after he wrote them. Now, I think Paul knew that he was writing with apostolic authority, and he knew that his letters were highly valued among the early Jesus followers. So Paul's surprise, I don't think, would be concerning the value of his letters, I think his surprise would have to do with time. It would bewilder Paul that Jesus had not returned 2,000 years later. This is because Paul tells us multiple times that he expected to see Jesus's return with his own eyes very soon. Famously in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So, That's one of multiple texts in Paul's letters where he includes himself among those who will personally witness Jesus' return. He says, we who are alive will meet the Lord at his coming. Now, clearly, Jesus didn't return in Paul's lifetime. So that raises a fair question. Was Paul incorrect regarding his expectation about when Jesus would return? 
Well, I'm going to go into uh, commercial mode for f- about 10 seconds and encourage you to get a copy of uh, my book here, The Weird Apostle, and check out chapter five for an in-depth answer to that question. But for now, I'm going to share part of my answer, which centers on what I call the arithmetic of biblical prophecy. So biblical prophets frequently expected big things to happen in their own generation. But the internal math of biblical prophecy usually includes the factor of human cooperation. So Paul was a lot like other Jewish end times predictors who presented expectations that could possibly come to pass in their time, but didn't come to pass because of human factors beyond their control. So again, read uh, read the weird apostle for more on this. But for now, here's the big point. Paul He wouldn't play in the long game because Paul thought that time was short. He wasn't thinking about organizing and advising a movement that would continue beyond his generation. And his letters reflect this sense of urgency and compression. Paul thought Jesus was coming soon. So that's our first, and I would say, overarching key for understanding Paul's fast-moving watch. Okay. The second key to understanding Paul's fast-moving watch is this. Paul's Jewish apocalyptic end times outlook deeply influenced his instructions. Okay, so we've talked about Paul's fast-moving watch. And if we imagine uh, Paul, of course, he didn't have a watch. He didn't have watches back then. But if we imagine Paul's metaphorical watch with two hands, I I like to say that one hand was apocalyptic and the other hand was eschatological. Now, I'm curious if you've heard those words before. Um, If you're normal, even if you've heard those words, you may not know exactly what they mean and how they function on this watch that we're talking about that Paul had. But they're cool words and they make you sound smart. But more importantly, these are key words for understanding Paul's mindset regarding time and how that affected his advice to his communities. So think of it like this. Apocalyptic is a word that refers to revelations and visions. We we have, you know, in the New Testament, John's Apocalypse, or the also known as the, the Book of Revelation. Okay, so apocalyptic means revelations and visions. And eschatological refers to the end times. The eschaton is the, you know, the time of the future or, or the end of the world. So we can kind of put this together this way. Paul was apocalyptic in that he had visions and revelations. And those visions drove him to be eschatological, meaning he was very focused on the end times that the Jewish prophets spoke of. So as a Jewish, apocalyptic, eschatological thinker, Paul was persuaded that normal time was just about over and a new time was about to be ushered in. And this new prophetic time, according to the Jewish prophets, included things like regathering the Jewish people to Israel, rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. And very importantly for Paul's mission, his new end times sensibilities meant that Gentiles had to break their bonds with the gods and give singular allegiance to Israel's God. Now, here's why this matters. These two fast-moving hands on Paul's watch deeply impacted the nature and the tone and the instructions in his letters. And so it's very important when reading and interpreting Paul to wrestle with, I would say, is a difficult question on any given point Paul makes. Might he have expressed himself differently if he knew time would continue normally after his generation? For example, in 1 Corinthians, let's let's look at that one. Paul promotes the idea that it's best to remain unmarried, and he discourages divorce. And his statements in 1 Corinthians about these topics, they're not very nuanced, and they don't consider the many complexities of life. But his instructions on these topics, they make sense for someone whose sense of time is super short. For Paul, Jesus was returning so soon that there was really no need Uh, to be distracted with details like marriage and divorce. Here's a big reason this matters. Paul didn't knowingly craft his letters for people he believed would have to continue 
navigating the complexities of life in this present world, in normal time, generation after generation. So I would say, especially for those in a faith community that embrace the pastoral role of Paul's letters, it's important to balance the authority of his letters with his short-term view of time. On all kinds of issues, Paul may have had more to say if he knew time would continue on. So again, key number two for understanding Paul's fast-moving watch is this. Paul's apocalyptic end times outlook deeply influenced his instructions. And regardless of how one classifies his letters, keeping that in mind will help us to understand his letters better. All right, let's move on to our third and last key for understanding Paul's watch. And that's this. Not everybody agreed with the time on Paul's watch. So I would say Paul's sense of time could be the most significant factor that made him a controversial character both before and after he became a Christ follower. Now, we'll talk about the pushback that Paul received as a Christ follower in just a moment. Uh, But keep in mind that Paul was a contentious character even before he became an apostle of Jesus. So in Galatians 1, he admits that he once persecuted Jesus' followers and tried to destroy the early Christ movement. So along this line, a good question that I'm occasionally asked is, why did Paul persecute the early Christ followers before he became one himself? Well, The reality is that neither Acts nor Paul's letters give us a clear reason why he strongly opposed the early Christ movement. But his opposition may have been about time. As a Jewish Pharisee, Paul likely had apocalyptic end times hopes based on the Jewish prophets, and he likely had those hopes well before he became a Christ follower. And like many other Jews under Rome's rule, Paul believed that God would one day liberate the Jewish people from the oppressive empire. But for pre-Damascus Road, Paul, that time had not yet come. And so the protocol for most Jews in Paul's day was simple. Keep quiet and don't draw Rome's attention with any kind of messianic or apocalyptic fervor that could trigger imperial wrath. Well, the early Jesus movement, they weren't playing that game. Uh, They were certainly not on board with keeping quiet about their message. Um, After Jesus' death, the early Christ movement, or shortly after his death, uh, they were determined to proclaim the message that Jesus was curious, uh, or not curious as in curious, but curious is the Greek word for Lord or master. So a Jewish movement proclaiming Jesus is Lord or master all over Israel and the Roman Empire at that time, that was a real threat to the well-being of Jewish communities everywhere. So Paul may have persecuted the Jewish Christ followers because he disagreed that the time was appropriate to promote a Jewish end times message. So Acts, the book of Acts, and Paul's letter suggest that Paul had some level of jurisdiction and authority to protect and guard the Jewish community. And so for Paul, at that time, you got this Jewish group aggressively proclaiming a a curios, uh, curios, other than Caesar, a lord, other than Caesar. Listen, from a Jewish perspective, a group like that had to be stopped. Movements like that put the entire Jewish community in danger. But on the Damascus Road, Paul's watch was completely reset. His flash moment, blinding encounter persuaded him that Jesus was indeed Lord and the Messiah. And this about face resulted in him joining those he once persecuted. And Paul's new sense of time came with a new calling to be an apostle to the non-Jewish world. And that new calling led him into a whole new area of contention. Because Paul was now convinced that the messianic clock was ticking, it also meant that it was time to invite non-Jews into God's kingdom, just as the ancient prophets that he loved had predicted. Paul's apocalyptic watch led him to believe that 
the time for the conversion of the nations had come. It was time for Gentiles to stop being pagans, worship Israel's God alone, and become what Paula Fredrickson calls eschatological or end times Gentiles. Now, once other Jews began to observe what time Paul thought it was on God's clock, with good reason, they were alarmed by his message. Look, worshiping the gods was central to the fabric and perceived well-being and security of the entire Greco-Roman world. That was the mindset and the worldview that was normative. So for a Jewish figure to start traveling around the Roman Empire, teaching Gentiles to renounce their obligations to the gods and offer worship to the Jewish God alone and give allegiance to a Judean martyr whom Rome had executed, well, to say the least, Paul's message stirred things up. It caused a big disturbance, and it was a PR nightmare for the Jewish community. So understandably, Jewish leaders would have done everything possible to keep Paul, who was one of their own, to keep him in check. They didn't want to pay the price for a Jewish teacher like Paul creating such a disturbance and potentially compromising the very delicate social position the Jews at that time found themselves in in ancient imperial Rome. Look, other Jews, other Jews may have agreed with Paul regarding what would happen in the future. Other Jews would have affirmed, yes, yes, Gentiles will one day turn from their gods and worship Israel's God uh, in the Acharit Hayamim, the end of days, no problem. But for most other Jews in Paul's day, that time had not yet come. According to their, according to their watch, it was not only inappropriate, but it was dangerous to proclaim such a message at that time. Bottom line, Paul's apocalyptic end times urgency was not welcomed by other Jews who were unconvinced that Jesus sped up the time on God's prophetic clock. So understanding Paul's fast moving watch is a critical factor in understanding the apostle and his letters. So as you're reading his letters, keep these three things in mind. First, Paul thought Jesus was coming back in his lifetime, really soon. Second, Paul's apocalyptic end times outlook deeply influenced his letters and his instructions. And three, not everyone agreed with the time on Paul's watch. That was a central source of the pushback he received. Now, why does understanding Paul's short-term view of time matter, practically speaking, today? Well, so many different groups engage Paul's letters for different reasons. Uh, because of Paul's profound, ancient, and ongoing influence, uh, many are interested in Paul for historical reasons. And then, of course, countless people look to Paul and his letters for religious and spiritual guidance. For whatever reason one approaches Paul, it's really important to remember that his fast-moving watch and apocalyptic outlook, it shaped his mission in his letters. He wasn't writing for the long haul, and he wasn't intending to answer modern questions that we have. Paul might have advised differently about certain topics if he felt more time was left on God's clock. Thus, any sense in which Paul's letters are used as a voice to inform modern perspectives should be done so with an eye towards the fast-moving arms on Paul's clock. Hey, thanks for listening to today's show. I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, questions uh, in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, I would appreciate if you would click that like button and the notification bell so that you can be aware when the next episode drops. And if you'd like to engage further, head over to ryanlambertforum.com. There you can sign up for the Game Changers Forum email and join the Game Changers Forum community, which will give you access to exclusive resources, benefits, and opportunities for us to interact. Joining the forum community is also a great way to encourage our ability to create more game-changing resources. We are 100% financially sustained by our audience, and we greatly appreciate your support. So thanks for considering this.
And we'll be back soon with more game-changing ideas for a life well-lived.